agile trainer, consultant, and coach at Lean Icon Technology and Training. I work with organizations, both large and small, and support them on their agile transformation journey. In this session, we will be looking at the safe portfolio configuration, which is one of the four configurations within the safe framework. The first configuration is the essential safe, which we've discussed in our previous course. And we've got the portfolio configuration, the large solution configuration, and the full configuration. Watch our videos for the large configuration and the full configuration. But in this particular session, we are focused at looking at the portfolio configuration. The portfolio configuration is made up of three layers and they all form part of the full configuration. In the portfolio configuration, we have the team layer, the program layer, and the portfolio layer. In the team area, we've got the agile teams, we've got the DevOps team, we've got the, we've got the dev team, we've got the product owner, and you've got the scrum master who will be working as a team to deliver business stories and to deliver business goals. We've got the Scrum Master acting as a servant leader and the product owner refining the backlog and making sure that the backlog is ready for the team during the PI planning event. The areas we're looking at now are the frameworks that exist within the SAFE team. In the teams, we'll be using Scrum, XP, Kanban and the team will be also acting as DevOps teams using other um, software languages to build their solutions. We've got the backlog which has non-functional requirements and then has also got stories, technical requirements, business requirements, policies, regulations that have to be taken into consideration to make the backlog ready with document, supporting documents that we need as part of our teams to deliver our expected outcomes. We are also considering our program increment week. In our program increment week, it's a two week where we've got time for our innovation and then time for planning before we go into our two day planning. So we have planning readiness before we go into our two day PI planning. And these are events that are coordinated by the release train engineer with support from the Scrum Masters. And when I look at the other areas that are in the uh, team layer, you've got iterations. And the iterations are driven by iteration goals that the teams will set at every iteration planning event. At the end of each iteration, we've got a system demo we're hoping that the teams are able to integrate their work and can demo what they've agreed to work on within that particular iteration. We've got our PI planning event, which happens in the innovation and planning iteration. The innovation and planning iteration includes the program increment planning event. Once that is completed, we can go into another set of iterations. On the team layer, we develop on cadence where all the teams work together to deliver expected outcomes. At the end of each uh, program increment, the teams should be delivering a solution that should be worthwhile for use by the business or the customer. And this goes on, but what's so important is the team would always have to make sure they build it in quality in the entire process. We can scale crappy code. We need to make sure that we're building quality in the entire process. In the program layer, we've got the release train engineer, the systems architect, the product management team. The product management team is led by the product manager and it includes the business owners, the product owners, and other supporting team members that would help us make sure that our features are ready for the next program increment. The release train engineer leads the team as a servant leader, more of a senior scrum master who would help the teams align themselves, prepare themselves for each event. More importantly, the program increment planning event 
and also supporting the teams throughout the iterations. He helps with things that cannot be dealt with by the Scrum Masters and resolves impediments that are beyond Scrum Masters. A very critical role, more the program lead, a driver to make sure that the program is working effectively. We've got the systems architect, someone who provides us an architectural, technical view of our existing system. That guidance for the team enables the team to maintain the architectural runway and have alignment within systems so that we can continuously integrate our systems and know which platforms we are working on. We also need the support of the systems team who work, who work with the systems architect to make sure that we are delivering our expected outcomes. In the program layer, they'll use a backlog and they'll use a Kanban framework to manage work in progress, ensure there is flow, and also make sure that the teams are guided by what they have to deliver. A prioritization of the team's backlog starts from the program layer. We've got business owners who will be helping the pro product management teams, the release train engineer, the systems architect in getting, making sure that everything is ready for delivery at the program increment or at the various um, demos and at various events. In the program layer, we are maintaining a continuous delivery pipeline. We need to make sure that all the teams working are aligned and synchronized. They've got the necessary tools to support them. So we have as first part of our program delivery pipeline, we've got our continuous exploration, making sure that we've got our features ready, our documents ready, our artifacts ready, and our understanding of the customer's expectation is all dealt with at the exploratory stage. It also involves making sure that our feature is going to deliver our expected outcome. We've got our continuous integration, the build of our software, where teams come together and build logic code to deliver the solution. It could be software, it could be solution, it could be a process. And this is all about making sure that we're building and integrating with multiple teams and aligning ourselves to deliver the expected outcome. This is led by various systems demos that the teams will be carrying out to deliver the optimum solution. At the end of the integration process, the teams need to have an environment to be able to deploy. And here we'll separate release from deployment and we'll separate our various staging environments so that we can deliver when the customer expects it. And this is based on the uh, fact that not our customers are not always available and they are not always ready to take our solutions or to start using our features. So we are working on the concept of releasing on demand. We've got DevOps, the Karma approach, a mindset of improvement, automation, measuring our processes and then recovering. Nobody wants to work in, in an unstable environment or nobody wants to deliver an outcome to the customer and the outcome would cause the customer's environment to be stable, unstable. So we want to make sure that we can easily recover. We maintain the architectural runway at the program level with the support of the systems architect and the systems team and the teams are all aligned to delivering those particular outcomes. So we've got a customer. Without a view and understanding of the customer, we are unable to deliver the expected outcome. There are two roles here, and these two roles would ensure that we're delivering value to the customer. The first role is the product manager. The product manager is customer facing, market facing, and has a big interest in what's happening in the market. And they support the teams with constant feedback, constant survey information, analyzing such environment to make sure that we're delivering. 
Then we've got the product owner who's in-house facing and ensures that we are helping the teams deliver their expected outcomes. So that is the program layer we've just covered. And the program layer also includes the features and the enablers delivered by the team. The final layer is our portfolio layer where decisions are made, where epics are derived, where business owners and epic owners will look at the business strategy and ensure that they are aligning to the strategy. In this layer, we've got the enterprise or government and they form the strategic plan, whether it's a 50 page, 100 page, two page, 10 page strategic document, we need to ensure that we know where we are going and that's driven by our business leaders. With that strategic plan in place, we are able to identify the key strategic themes that should fit into our portfolio canvas. With a clear understanding of what our portfolio is delivering, our portfolio could be accounts, it could be business delivery, it could be um, focused on a particular customer value stream. With this clear portfolios identified, we are able to work with our epic owners, our enterprise architect, to have an overview of our delivery pipelines. More importantly, we are interested in our value streams. Our value streams deliver value to the customer and we need to take an overall look at our organization and draw out our key value streams and see how the business systems, people, processes help deliver overall value to the customer. If we have a good understanding of our portfolio, we are able to create our portfolio Kanban, which are key projects or key product deliveries or initiatives that should be delivered over a particular period. We are able to assign a budget and then create a lean business case to sign off our initiatives and then we can once the epic is signed off it goes into the portfolio for delivery we'll manage the epic flow and make sure that we have a better understanding of our of our horizon and we make sure we have a better understanding of our horizon and our roadmap to delivering our business strategy and this will be monitored with our key performance indicators that we would locate in our strategy. This helps us to understand where we are and where we are going as an organization. The, portfo the portfolio configuration has two supporting palettes. The first palette covers the metrics, the reports that we need to ensure that we are always collating and learning and what improving in our processes. At the team layer, we might collect uh, information from our burn up charts, our cumulative flow diagrams, our metrics, and then we've got our shared services that would help support where needed. We could have our shared services team being roles like content writer, um, legal advisor and these are roles that are non-core to the development team and they will come in when we need them. We've also got our communities of practice. Uh, our communities of practice are there to help us to continuously learn and improve. SAFE is built on the foundation that we will relentlessly learn and improve and that can be found in the house of Lean. Relentless learning, relentless improvement. Yeah, And then we've got our milestones. Who said milestones are good? Who said milestones are bad? But in SAFE, we've got that area of milestones that provide us with performance, product, process, metrics that we can learn from. And we've got such natural milestones, not artificial and fixed milestones, that we find in our waterfall environments. Such natural milestones are at program increment stages. Yep. At each PI increment, we are able to identify um, 
at each PR increment, we are able to work and improve on what we've done so far based on the products, the performance, the process, and they are natural milestones that we would be looking at delivering a product to the customer or we could be learning from our entire process which gives us a better understanding of how we are currently performing. Then you've got our roadmaps. Our roadmaps will be derived from our epics and we've got epic roadmaps, we've got feature roadmaps and then we've got team roadmaps of work that are seated in the backlog. Then we need a clear vision and that vision will come from the business, it will come from the product management team and that aligns the entire teams to deliver value. We've got our systems team that are continuously integrating work that is being done by the team and helping the teams to work together effectively. Finally, we've got our lean user experience. We bring in our 